Good afternoon, guys. Thank you all for being here in this afternoon. Welcome to Holberton School. Holberton School is a community driven school which trains full stack software engineers in two years using uh, peer learning and project based learning. Today, <coughs> today, we are pleased to welcome our loving mentor from LinkedIn, Neha Jain. <laughs> She is specialized in Ruby on Rails, Sinatra, JavaScript, Python, and C. Today, she will be sharing with us her expert opinion on the regular expressions. With that, let's welcome Neha Jain. introduction earlier and I am thinking that most of you guys would know a lot of what I'm going to do here today so uh, what how I've done it is in a way to make this more interactive so at any point in time if you have any questions or uh, any things that uh, any mistakes to point out and just uh, speak out that's it's funny okay so you guys know what regular expressions are and you have done the introduction to regular expressions and you know a fair bit of uh, what goes when. So anybody what regular expressions are? Come on! <laughs> this is so... Oh no, don't, don't, don't do this to me. <laughs> So, like broadly speaking, it's like a pattern that um, you use to match certain like different strings of text. Hmm, that's a very good. That's really good. Okay, but I thought regular expressions were just simple, simply expressions that you use regularly. No. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm wrong. But yeah, so seriously, what she said was correct. Um, but then, to that note. Is this a regular expression? How many say yes? Okay, how many say no? <laughs> that's, that's better, right? How many say no? Okay, so you guys got it correct. I guess I am going to waste a lot of your time. So, Let's try this regular expression at this link. Uh, so uh, I suppose that all you guys have access to uh, this presentation, and you guys can check on the link. Oh, you don't have access to I'll just send me back. Okay. Uh, no problem. Uh, I'll just show it to you here then, because you guys probably don't also have uh, uh, computers with you. Okay. So let's see here. So. Yeah, age is a regular expression because it matches age in the string. So in the string, wherever there is a edge, this is not looking good. Let me increase the font size. This is a really uh, great website where you can uh, try the regular expressions and it uses the regular expression engine of Ruby, which is very different from the actual regular expression. So every language has their own implementation of the regular expression engine, which we will dive uh, slightly into uh, towards the later part of the presentation. And uh, Ruby's regular expression engine is fairly advanced and it supports a lot of things that we will be covering here. The 
most inclusive regular expression engine. Uh, let's see. Perl has uh, the most advanced regular expression engine, but it doesn't support a fair bit of things that .NET supports. Yes, surprise. .NET has a fairly <laughs> advanced regular expression engine. Uh, but yeah, so uh, for this part of the course, we will mainly be using Rubular. So all our regular expression uh, expressions that we will be dealing with here will mostly work with uh, the Ruby's regular expression engine. And where they don't, if I remember, then I'll uh, make sure to point that out. Uh, the regular expression engine of different languages, uh, for example, Java and JavaScript, they are very different and they behave differently. <coughs> and at the end of uh, the presentation, uh, or like when I share the presentation with you guys, then I'll make sure to add uh, useful links where you can go and reference uh, more of these things when you are, are trying it out by yourself. So yeah, so this regular expression that we have there is literal characters. So there are these characters that we have here, they are literal characters. They just literally mean what you see. So A refers to A and H refers to H. It is uh, it has no special meaning or second meaning to uh, any of these. But there are different uh, expressions that, uh, different characters that we'll see which have special meaning to them and we will try to uh, cover most of them here. With that, let's, uh, so this makes sense to uh, all of you, right? So, if you expected that AH would only match AH and not match anything else, then that's uh, also possible. regular expression and it matches only the cases where a is uh, first a is has a second a following it and then there is an h following that it will not match things like triple a because the last character which is there is h that the regular expression expects the last character to be h which is uh, if it doesn't matches then there is no match for the regular expression so let's see how you'll match this by the way, these three dots there, they are like infinite A's. Anyone? So you have like multiple A's and then it, it, all of it ends in an H. The ending character has to be H. How will you match this uh, string? So what will be the regular expression? to match the string. Yeah? A star H. Okay, that's that's very nice. Let's keep that. Let's hold on to that part. So what does A star H uh, match? It matches this. Would it match, uh, is it a whiteboard? Yeah, yes. Here's a whiteboard. Yeah. Oh, this is the whiteboard? Yeah. Awesome. You guys are amazing. So just the. The yellow bit on the end, mm -hmm. uh, that has to be seen by the camera, so just don't cover it up. <laughs> I'll just try it. Yeah. When you write, just don't, uh, don't cover the end. Show okay. The first show sure. how to get away. Oh, I see. Infinite number of A's 
followed by an edge that terminate in an edge. But does this match this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Does this match this? Yeah. Does this match? No. 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 What? Yes. No? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's inside. Yeah, it's inside. Not the entire Okay, yes. how many say yes. no? Yes. You don't say no. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the A star H, it's inside A, H, A, but not entirely. No. So, it, okay, let's use another color. Blue. So it would match a edge, right? Like if you okay, let's see. Let's let's go to the So here, uh, so here, uh, as you'll see that there is a, the ending character has to be edge, but we don't have any other character here that says that it cannot be followed by anything else, or it has to be followed by something else. So how would the regular expression work on this? So the regular expression sees A. Then it sees, in the text string it sees A. This is a match so far. Then the regular expression moves on to the next character here, which is A. But here it sees that there is no A. Instead, there is a star. So now star here is not the literal multiplication symbol or conditions apply. The star here is instead a special character that has a special meaning for the regular expression. What this means in this case is that zero or one occurrences of the preceding character will be matched. So when it sees star, then the, then the regular expression engine goes back one step. It backtracks. It backtracks and see where is the star attached to. It is attached to A. And then it says that, okay, there can be more than one occurrences, more than uh, zero occurrences of this character, which it is uh, preceding. So then it sees, okay, yeah, this matches. Then it sees the next character, H. And then it goes back here. It is not A. So it doesn't match with the A star. And then it instead moves to the next character in the expression, which is H, and that matches. Then it goes to the next character, A. And there is nothing in this expression that says that you don't have to accept A, or you have to accept A, or H has to be followed by something else. So in that case, it just drops here, because that's something that doesn't match. And it just says that this is the match. So you see the match result is AAH. OK, so let's see what happens when you have, when you have this. Okay, let me use a different name. What, what will clear do? It will clear everything? If you just want to erase this thing. I, I just want to erase this. This is right here. Okay. Okay, this is cool. Okay, so how does 
it work on this? Is this a match? Yes. Is this not a match? Yes. Not a match. Who says not a match? Okay. Who says is a match? Are you guys having fun back there? <laughs> I'm talking about the page. Yeah. Page. No match. <laughs> majority wins. I'm taking the vote. I'll just say what it is. No, okay. No, really. This this is a match because see. Let's see how the regular expression is in Caesar. So you have H here, right? Now the regular expression starts with A. There is no A. So it's like okay, this is not a match. But then the expression, the the entire token. The expression has not finished yet. It is just one token that is not a match. So the regular expression engines are pretty smart in the case that until they have verified all the possible permutations of an expression, they don't give up. That is what you should do in life, by the way. <laughs> Try all the possible permutations and just don't give up. Just keep trying. So that's what the regular expression engine does. What it does is it sees, OK, A is not a match, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to see what are the other permutations here. So then it goes forward and it sees there's a star. OK, this is fancy. It says there's a star. And the engine understands that star means 0 or 1 occurrence of the preceding character. 0 or 1 occurrence, right? So even if it doesn't occur in that case, it's fine because A is just null. So it's like, OK, fine. I'm so far so good. So then it moves on to H, and H is a match. So that's when it says that H is a match. And let's see what this uh, thing will do. So, so that is a match, right? Yeah, actually, I was like just confused because I'm used to the shell uh, regular expression. So for me, A star H mean, meant A, anything, H. What do you mean by shell regular expressions? Oh, That's like in the, in the terminal. The terminal regular expressions yeah, are the Unix regular expression engine yeah. is the most uh, foundational regular expression engine. Like everything else that came out after it is based on the regular expression engine that was written in Unix. So that this thing will work just as it is working here in regular in uh, on this shell. This? Yeah. Okay, so just. We can try that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This is yes, this is the white card. Yes. These are repetition tokens. And there are more of them. Let's see what else is there. Okay, um now I will only clear this. Okay, so there are where varieties of uh, repetition tokens that can be used in a regular expressions. So uh, you want to match the exact occurrences of a character of a to or a token. You want to say that okay, I want A to come in only once or twice or thrice or whatever. Like you just have that okay, A has to come in m to n number of times. In that case, you say this. So here, A comes in one, two, or three times. So here, A is once, this, this passes. Then A comes in twice, this passes. A comes in thrice before H. This is, this is good. This is interesting. But you already have the answer here. Never mind, you'll have your moment. So uh, what happens here, I'll just quickly explain this, because this is really important. So, Let's see what, what, what goes on here, okay? Uh, so there is A, right? And so the regular expression sees this. It sees an A. This A matches. It goes forward. It sees another A. That is fun sees another A, even that is fine, because the count is 3. Then it sees another A. This is 4. 
what happens here is that the expression doesn't match. But it doesn't give up. It keeps trying. What it does is that it backtracks. Now it backtracks. So this was the zeroth position that it was starting. When it backtracks, it's like, OK, I'll just drop this. And I'll start from here. So now this becomes 0. And now these are three h. Then it goes on to the next one. And it sees h here. So for, for now, this is the match. But what if there was, let's see, there was a here, a here, and then h. What do you think would be the match in that case? Would, would it match? Yeah. Yeah. So, Anybody? What do you think would be the match in that case? What did it just the, the last three a and h. Yes, that is correct. So it just so you are understanding how it is going, right? Like it, it goes, it keeps going, and it backtracks and it drops. So it keeps on uh, verifying that okay, this works and this is not working, and where it is not working, it tries the other possible permutation or the other possible arrangement that might work, right? So it goes forward and it says, okay, this was zero, I'll drop that, and this was zero, I'll drop that, and then it keeps going forward and then it matches. I can't totally read your handwriting above. So it's three A's and then H, then A, A, H there? Yeah, so there was earlier four A and H, but then I changed uh, after explaining the first thing, and then now there are seven A's and H. So why wouldn't it also match the last two A's and H? <coughs> last two. It, it, uh, that's a very good question. Brilliant question. Okay. Any answers? Anybody would uh, like to answer the question? Okay, I'll read the question. So the question is that why doesn't it match these and this, right? Yeah, I mean, I've only used them in JavaScript. I'm not a student here. I know with JavaScript, you need like JavaScript. a local flag. Yeah, JavaScript has a very different regular expression. It is not like the, uh, yeah, JavaScript is a bit of a trick. But uh, most, so uh, I'm, I cannot really say how this will work in JavaScript, but my understanding is that uh, the pro what is going on here is basically greedy matching. So what regular expression engines are kind of tuned towards is matching everything that matches. Like they don't, they don't, uh, so, okay. The regular expression engine is like a bear. When it is summer, it just keeps feeding, keeps feeding, keeps feeding, because it knows that it has to go into dormancy at some point in time. So it won't just stop eating until there is some signal that tells it, okay, just stop eating because you're eating everything that was meant to be shared, right? So with that note, what happens here is that it sees this A, <coughs> it keeps on going forward, and it matches here. So it can definitely match this, but that's not what it will match. Because there is a 1 to 3h. So it will try to match the maximum which is possible. Like that is what is happening here, right? Like even here, like with these three a's and h, it should have match, matched a h, right? But it doesn't. It matches the maximum that is possible. Like whatever is the most that it can match. This is called the greedy uh, matching approach. And regular expression engines are tuned towards matching greedily. They'll just keep on matching. So that is what happens here, right? If you see, uh, this uh, question. Okay, let's let's move on to the next one. This this concept will become much more clearer with the question mark. Okay, so the answer is probably here. Uh, the question mark matches zero or one occurrences of the preceding token. So whenever you add a question mark after a token, by the way, token is what? Token is any of these literal or uh, meta characters that are there. That the one single thing is called a token. Okay, uh, so when you have a question mark h, so a is a literal character, a is basically a, it doesn't have any second meaning to the regular expression, and then there is a question mark, now that makes things interesting. Let's see how it matches this. It sees a, okay, there was an a, so I'll go to h, and then this is fine, this matches, then it goes to this, let's see with what happens with this. It sees an a, okay. Then it moves to the next day. Well, this doesn't seem right because the question mark says only zero or one. So now, A and A don't give you a match. So in that case, it drops the first A and it goes to the second A. 
and then it sees an edge. And that's fine because that matches. But the question over here is that why doesn't it match only edge? Why does it match A edge? Like A could have a zero or one occurrence of the character, right? Because there was a question mark after it. So it should have just matched an edge, but it doesn't because it works greedily. It says, it, the, the question mark here says that, okay, if you find it, then you have to match it. How do we solve this? Uh, I probably have a slide on this, so maybe I'll uh, tell you how to solve the greediness uh, problem of the regular expressions. So let's just sleep on it for now. Okay. Just just wait on that, on that note. Okay, then what does plus do? We've already seen um, zero or more occurrences, like we had the A star thing. There is plus, which is slightly more interesting than uh, star, because it matches one or more occurrence. So, when you, so A star H would match just a single H character, because it said that A can be occurring zero times or more than zero times. But if it doesn't occur, then it doesn't have a problem, because it could occur zero times. In this case, this is not a match because it has to occur more than one times, right? Uh, the interesting thing about all these uh, special characters is that you can translate them into uh, the curly brace format. How do you do that? There are three uh, special characters here, and there is one curly brace there. I'll take three answers. How will you uh, write question mark, like what question mark does in the curly braces format? Yep. You could use zero to one. Oops, sorry. Oh, 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 nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, I cannot see you, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, this is Daniel here. Um, I guess you could use uh, the curly brace, but instead of one to three, you could use zero to one. That is amazing. Yes, uh, that is great. So, what happens? Everybody's following here, right? So, it says zero or one occurrence of the preceding character. So, you could also write a zero one h. That's a good one, Daniel. I have not gotten gifts, but I should probably send you one. <laughs> and, uh, and the others will be answering questions. Just write me an email that you answer that question during the session. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Plus. Anyone? Yeah. Yes, yes, but maybe like zero to infinity because you can match as many characters as up here. That is slightly correct, slightly wrong. Because this says matches one or more occurrences. Oh, yeah. One, one, two. Yeah, so one to infinity. So how do you say one to infinity? Like, is there a character that you would be able to say infinity? Star is star. Star already has the conditions of I think. N? Can you do greater than one? Or greater than zero? Yeah, you can do greater than zero. So how do you do that? Oh, greater than sign. Greater than sign is a literal character for the expressions. Like we, we have to translate it into m comma n. Okay, regular expressions are really smart in that case. What they do is that they understand human emotions. So they're like, if you just don't write anything here, then it's pretty much infinite. Right? Pretty. So instead of complicating with three dots or infinity or multiple other options. Uh, whoever designed regular expressions, they decided to keep it simple. We can just leave, leave it there. Okay, so what, this one is a really easy one. Star. How do you write star in this format? Yeah. So you say zero, and then that's it. So these are like the shortcuts to uh, matching the exact occurrences of character tokens with curly braces, right? So let's clear this one. And then move on to the next one. Yep, 
That's a challenge. <laughs> we have to match the regular expression here to the regular expression highlighted in orange. And I'll give you five minutes to quickly uh, try your hand at it, and, and then we'll take answers. You're telling me to write a pattern that would match? Oh, the pattern is here. You have to tell me what is the match string out of this uh, test string. Like, uh, I, I'm, there is this green things here, right? Green and red. So you, you just have to match the string that matches. So for example, here, this is what matches. And this has been dropped. So you basically have to just underline that uh, text, that part of the text string that matches. Right? So I'll give you five minutes, or say four minutes, because there are four. And then I'll just call one of you guys here, and then you can underline that part. Okay? Pen and paper will come really handy. And for the students watching on stream, you can just shout out. By the way, I'm not keeping a time. You're doing it? Oh, no, thanks, I'm going here after you. <laughs> Neha, would you be able to post the link to the slides on the Hangouts page? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let me do that. So, oh, yeah. They weren't now, I guess. Do you guys have uh, I just share it with you. Is there like a, a what's the Holocron uh, where all the students are? That's that at holocronschool.com. Say that again? Right. I'll be sharing these slides on Slideshare and I'll send out the link for that, but for now... Uh, uh, it's also uh, on the Hangouts tab, on the ones in this previous there. Oh, I do want to say The previous tab. Yeah, right there. Yeah, okay. Text on the left. There's the blue on the Sorry. left. Oh, yep, that's it. I'll post it on Slack. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so is that four minutes? No. No? Four minutes are quite long. I would say it's like four minutes long. Huh? Four minutes are four minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> they just seem too long. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll start taking uh, solutions for the first one. Anybody who saw the first one? Yeah? Come on up. Next one. 
uh, which is a question mark h. Anybody? Wants to answer. Oh yeah. All right. Sorry. I didn't see it.
So it sounds like the regular expression engine looks character by character, but it will only move forward if you have one of these repetition tokens, like for a given character, like for the first age, it only moves forward if it finds like a question mark plus um, or a star. Yeah. But you know, but otherwise, even if like for number two, the one we're looking at, if there was no question mark after after the first, if it realized that the first age was not an A, it would move on to the A. Yes. Yes, that is our goal. But in terms of how the engine is operating, it is backtracking. What it does is that it sees this and then it sees that, okay, this is not matching. So then it goes back into the token and then it uh, defines the other permutations, right? So it's not actually moving forward. It is, it goes, it sees the whole expression and then in the string it is going forward. Yes, in the string it is definitely going forward. For the actual expression that is there, it is backtracking the expression to define the other possible permutations. Does that make sense? Awesome. Any other questions? I think you are really confused. Yeah. Yeah. Very much, very much. Um, I'm not really sure what to say at the end of them. No, uh, okay. take your time. Like this, this con these concepts yeah. are really tricky. Okay, I guess if we could just like work through how it goes through there again. Um, so basically, okay, so it, when you put in the A question mark, A. Okay, let's see. Let's, you come here and then you work through it. Just with the H, basically. You come here and you work through it. And I'll, it. Yeah. This is really important concept, guys. And uh, if you're not getting this uh, right at this point, just we need to stop and understand this completely before moving forward. And uh, you can use all that time to solve the other one. <laughs> if you've got that. Yeah. Doing it. OK, yeah. so this goes in. It's 0 or 1 them. A's followed by an H. And apparently, it sees the 0 or 1 A's followed by an H, and then it stops, is what we figured out. Mm -hmm. And I guess I hadn't realized it was going to do that. I thought it was going to go through the entire string. And it would be greedy and then match this and then stop. That is that is correct. Some of the regular expression engines will do that. Which are so okay, this is very late into the slide, but I'm going to do it right now because otherwise you guys are going to not understand what is going on here. Okay? So okay. yeah, you could. Okay, so let's see this. So there are two kinds of regular expression engines. One is text directed and the second one is regex directed. start matching something, they are called text directed engines. They do backtracking, but they first try to find the match from the text string. In which case they'll be greedy and they'll match whatever they see first and they'll stop if they find a match. Then there are regex directed engines. The regex directed engines, how they work is they are based on the regular expressions. They first see the regular expression, they try all the different permutations before moving on to the next character. So let's see how this works for... So this is the regular expression that we are using here and this is the text that we have. Okay? So what happens here is that in case of text directed engines, they see H, but this is an A, so it moves forward. This is an A, okay. Now this is getting somewhere closer. Then it sees another A, but there is no second A. 
right? Because it is moving by the text, it's not seeing the uh, regular expression first. So it sees the next if before seeing the question mark. And then it sees the question mark because there is no second A here. So in that case it will see, okay, now this is a special character and what this means is that there can be a zero or one occurrence of A. So now it backtracks and it drops this, right? And then it, uh, then it sees H here. And then it also sees an H here. So now this is a match and this is what a text directed uh, engine would match. Okay? So for all of you with me? Any questions? Okay, yeah. Um, would it go all the way to the end of the string and like make sure that there isn't a longer match before returning that match? That's something that does not happen. So whenever it sees the, it depends, again it depends. So basically, uh, like on Rubular, when you try these regular expressions, right? So what they will do is they'll show you all the possible matches. But the first one is the first match. With, uh, when you're programming regular expressions and you're using them in the scripts like Ruby or Python or whatever you're writing, then what it does is that you have uh, things like dot match. And what that returns is the first match that it gets. But then you can also see matches all and then it returns everything in an array. Right? Does that make sense? I see a very good question on this. I just wasn't paying attention this time. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm trying to say here is that when you're using a, a scripting language or like any language and you're trying to write this regular expression in the language and you're trying to match it to a string, then what happens? So uh, programmatically, you can get all the matches that are possible in this string and in that case it will return an array but the first position of that array is going to be this in a text directed engine and it is not going to match H because it's already passed that point okay then there is a raised written engine how that will behave is okay, I'm probably stuck with black so uh, follow me oh I can use green What they will do is uh, the regular expression will see the regular expression first before seeing string, right? Sees an A, sees an H, doesn't match. Then you go to the next, then it goes to the next token in the expression. Sees a question mark, and it sees okay, this is a zero one occurrence of this, and then it goes to H, and then it sees the H here, and that is where it matches the H, and this engine will give you both the matches. Yeah. So, uh, let's go back. Okay. Third one. Do I have anybody excited to answer the third question? I will definitely send you guys uh, some gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep participating. Anyone? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does this look correct to everyone? It's not going to match H. Why not? Because you need one or more A's. Plus is one or more A's. Right? So it will not match H and it will match this. So I guess this is a given. Okay. So let's skip to the next one. AH and then it ma matched AH in YA, but we probably didn't want it that and we wanted to just match the AH token as it is. So if you have to uh, match anything specific to the position, like so far the repetition tokens that we have seen, they consume characters, 
right? They see the character, they consume the character, and then they move forward. They always keep. Yeah. Sorry, can you go back to the last one very quickly? Yeah. I take up too much time here. So the, did we ever do the star with the last? We one? didn't do that. Okay. Do you want to answer? Yeah, I was wondering if that meant the H would also be matched there in the beginning. So yes. Zero. Okay, so it has two matches. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So. Uh, so far, the repetition tokens that we've been seeing, they consume characters. When they move on to the uh, regular, when they move on to the input string, then they keep consuming the string, and it's basically like, think of it, uh, like, have you guys seen tape recorders? And I guess I'm more absolutely not tape recorders. So you, you used to have cassettes. So basically, what used to happen in the cassettes was there was this uh, blue tape kind of a thing, and it used to move forward and when you were doing rewind or forward then the tape was physically moving forward. So just think of uh, these regular expressions as consuming that tape. They actually pull that tape forward. It's like this, they're, they're pulling it forward, they're consuming it and then they're moving on to the next one. Right? But now what we want to do is that we want and then after the tape recorders CDs came up and what, what used to happen with the CDs is that you could actually quickly peek and play song one, song two, song three. How does that happen? Right? Because otherwise you would rewind and you would be like, okay, I'm one minute in the song, I have to go back and uh, forward it or rewind it or something like you were always busy with those two buttons and play was the <laughs> least uh, used thing at that time. <laughs> but then CDs came about and they were very smart because they would actually anchor onto the one thing. So that's what anchor tokens do. What anchor tokens do is that they match positions. They are not consuming any character of the string. They don't consume A or H or B or C or D or blah blah whatever. They don't consume any character. They actually see just the void that is there before the character, after the character and in between the character. Okay? So when you see this string, then what do you see? You see that there is A and there is H. What you don't see is that there is this void, this void, and this void. There are these three voids in between the strings, which is something that the regular expression will see. Okay? So we are going to talk about all these voids more, but right now we are only going to talk about these four anchor tags that are here. These are the most simple anchor tags, but they are really confusing, just as you see, whatever earlier. So, this is a caret sign. The caret sign behaves as an anchor tag when it is used in this kind of a expression. When it comes at the starting, like, wherever it comes, it just means start of line. So, back in the olden days, there used to be uh, like you guys would have seen a typewriter where you would press carry and return and then it was physically, the cursor would physically move on to the next line. So uh, that's where the first, that's where the starting of the line is. So all these new line characters that we see in HTML, they don't really work. You actually have to use a break tag or something like that to move the cursor down uh, or to break the cursor from that ever flowing line which it is writing to. So, um, the new line characters, the void after the new line character matches the start of the line. Okay? So, for example, if you see in this string, there is H A, then there is a slash N, and then there is A H, and this is what it matches. Okay? Uh, similarly, we have end of line position. And that is matched by the dollar sign. It's not the money, it's the end of line. And, but then there are cases when you are reading a file. Like you have the entire file input coming in. In that case, what you want to see is just the start of file and the end of file. And you want everything else to just match. right? So in that case, you use slash n slash c. They are the start of file and the end of file characters and they will uh, so in this case they will not see any match does it make sense because to them slash n is kind of invisible 
they don't break at that uh, point. They, they don't see the next line after that. Everybody with me so far? Do I need to go through any of these uh, input strings? Just stop me if there is any confusion, okay? But before that, we have a challenge to solve. <laughs> so say you have a website, and you are you have a sign-up form where the user has to enter the 10-digit phone number where you will send them uh, the two-factor authentication number, and that is what you will use to identify that this is uh, this is this uh, user is not a robot, right? So what is the regular expression that you will write which will match only and only a 10 digit phone number? Can I phone number have like dash is in parentheses? That's a good question. Let's assume they cannot. And for this one I'll give you just one minute. <laughs> Four minutes are just too long. Oh, there's an answer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can see my answer on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I can see your answer. Okay. But I'm not getting answers from Daniel because he's already given an answer. <laughs> <laughs> questions for everyone else <laughs> to take an answer <laughs> and not have a repetition. Brackets. 
Like this? No, I mean the other way. Oh, okay. No, that that's that's fine. Like we can just assume that if you're writing this string in size goes to the size. So yeah. We can assume that's that's we taken care of. Okay, Daniel, do you want to correct? Uh, yeah, it should be parentheses. It should be square brackets. Okay. Is that it? Do you have any other correction? Uh, I don't know if, if it'll work now. It might work, but I don't know now. Okay. Okay, you. Uh, maybe a dash instead of a comma. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can totally do that. Uh, that's that's fine. That's basically the same thing. You can you can also say uh, so. What do you mean? Matt. Matt. Okay. So Matt says that you can also have. Uh, oh, okay. I'm using the by putting a new line character and then more digits since the uh, the dollar sign matches the end of the new line? That is absolutely correct and uh, that can happen. So that is why in uh, the industry uh, level code you don't use uh, caret and dollar, you use slash in slash c. What? Slash in slash c, the other ones that you saw. Oh, okay. Right? Because they will not even match those uh, new line characters. In most of uh, the regular expression engines, there is a setting where you can say that dollar and caret should uh, match uh, the new, like should consider the new line characters and not change line out. Right? So there is, uh, there are those settings in certain languages. But mostly, uh, like in Ruby, you use slash and slash c. Uh, in these cases, it is kind of fine because when you are using uh, an input uh, tab, then with which is a text box, then you can possibly say that okay, it 
for the text box settings, you can say that at new line, it will actually submit the form. Like when you press enter, then it will submit the form. And there is no way to enter anyway. So that's one thing. So there are multiple ways to solve it. But yeah, that's a good catch. Bravo. So just yeah. with those last two additions. So the bracket is saying not something else, and the dollar is just saying to end it after 10 characters. The bracket is saying. Oh, the dollar sign is saying to end it after 10. Um, yeah, yeah. The dollar sign is saying that it has to match the end of line. So let's say, so uh, the point that Mason brought up was that there is a 12 digit uh, phone number that you have entered, or say the 11 digit phone number, right? So you have. Uh, Oh. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it goes on until here, and then it sees two, right? If you don't have the dollar, then what will happen is it will drop the first two, it will drop the first two, and then it will match the rest of the ten digits. Okay? But if you have dollar at the end, then this there is no because there is a character the end the void uh, that follows the right, so. uh, end of line thing that is not matched. So in that case, it will just say that this is not a match. Make sense? Awesome. You guys are doing really great so far. These are the character tokens that we just saw there, which uh, Daniel was using and uh, Electra kind of messed up, but she was there. <laughs> so uh, we'll get to what the parentheses do. But for now, we are using square brackets. So most of this is kind of uh, self-descriptive. We'll just quickly walk through the examples. If any of you are getting bored, let me know. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. When you have to match all the English alphabets, which, by the way, there are 26 English alphabets, and uh, you have to match all the 10 digits, then it becomes like a lot verbose, regular expression if you have to write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? I can go on to Z. So for those uh, things, there is a shortcut that you can use with this. Inside of these character classes, these are called character classes or character sets. How you define them is with the square brackets. Okay? Inside of these square brackets is an entirely different regular expression word. Inside of this, star is a star. Inside of this, plus is a plus. It is not a regular expression token. It is not a special character. Inside of this hyphen is a special character, which was not outside. Okay? So this is the character word. There are all these people with funny characters. But uh, yeah. And all these other things like uh, slash, which was like a uh, uh, special character outside, it, it doesn't work here. The story of hyphen is really interesting. It is a special character when it is being used here, like between two other characters, it is a special character. But when it is being used here, it just works as it would work in a set or in subtraction. Okay? Things are starting to get a lot more trickier. So just follow along. So, uh, Let's see what this actually does. So this is a, a fairly correct uh, usage of character classes. So any of you people British here? Yeah, they spell great differently than Americans do. I don't know how Indians do this. We were like, we mostly do it how British is do. But yeah, so if you have to match both the spellings of great, and in that case, this regular expression comes in really handy. How this works is that G and R are little characters, they just match. Then it sees 
okay, this is getting interesting, the story has a twist. And then it sees either one of these characters, so yeah, they both match. And then there's a Y, so both of these match, right? So far everything is understood? Let's see what happens here. So there is a string. match with this regular expression. This this is an entire uh, string, which is which is a full string. This is this is the input token. So what do you think is the first match? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Anybody has a different opinion? So she said that GRAY is the first match. Anybody has a different opinion? Okay, so Asaya, now you'll have to explain why do you think that's the first match. Well, I mean, you first had gray in the statement equal to the second G R E Y. That's That was my uh, assumption if you're starting from left to right. That is correct, yes. So when you're starting from left to right, then the first one that matches is the match that it returns. So what I'm getting to here is that whatever you have inside it, it's not that it is ordered. It, it is not an ordered match. It will not try to match E before then A because E is coming before A. Does it make sense? So if you have, uh, like if you have say anything else here inside it, so you have the entire string easy inside it and you have to match crazy or something else, then it doesn't uh, it will not match that that string because whatever is inside it matches only one character of it like that is why it is not matching this thing although this is not an actual word but this is not being matched although it has both, both E and A because you don't have any repetition outside of it what the character classes do is that they match one and only one character of whatever is occurring inside the character class in no specific order Does it make sense? Did I confuse you more? Okay. <laughs> That's it's not a good uh, answer. I'll ask once again. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. So let's try something to find out if that makes sense. Uh, So let's say the expression, the regular expression is this, okay? Can you read it? There is easy written inside the character set, okay? And you have to match it to <laughs> how many say it would match? Okay, who's, okay, everybody says that it doesn't match. Who is going to come and explain why it doesn't match? Or just stand up and explain why it doesn't match? I'm sorry, can you say the question? It's, so, before the question was, is gray? Uh, is gray? <laughs> I just want to make sure I understand the mm -hmm. question. Before the question was, is gray, D-R-A-Y, equal to G-R-A-Y? That, that was the input string. Yeah. Right. Now, now the input string, string is, is crazy. Just crazy. Yeah. So is G R E A S Y equal? Yeah. Will will that regular expression match this new input string? So there is a new regular expression and there's a new input string. I see. Okay. Yeah. You've taken an answer. No. Yeah, you haven't. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, because you will only match one of the characters inside the bracket, the square brackets, mm -hmm. you know the whole sequence. Instead of the whole sequence. Yeah. That makes sense to everyone? So how can we fix this regular expression to match the string? Yeah, that is that is one solution, that is a uh, perfectly correct solution. You can add a plus here and that will match this string. 
Okay? There is one more thing here. Yeah. Can you just take away the <coughs> Can you just take away the square brackets? Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is, uh, yeah, that's the most simple solution. Everybody is done with these uh, problems, and that's what you should do. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so, uh, okay, there is, okay, there, there are three more sections here. I was going more to the next slide. Anyway, uh, so inside the character classes, there is another special character which we have already seen, so that was the anchor tag. And you see it again here. Anyone wants to take a guess how this behaves? You don't have to take a guess because it's already written here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the carrot sign that you see here, it's, it doesn't behave as an anchor tag. It doesn't match to the void that is just before the first character of the string at the start of line. Instead here, it is acting as a negation. When you put the caret sign inside the square bracket, followed by everything uh, else, followed by all the other characters that you are going to have inside the character set, what it essentially tells the regular expression engine is that do not match whatever comes after it. Match everything else, but do not match these characters. So if you say, I'll explain this, this example, but uh, for explaining, so if you say this, so what this regular expression essentially means is that match everything else except the small uh, English alphabets. So this will match high perfectly fine if you have a plus. This will match high perfectly fine, but it will not match this because this is a small character. So everything else except what is inside, that's what the negation thing does. Okay, so now let's make things interesting. If you say, what does this mean? That's, that's how you would think it. Okay, so uh, her answer is that, okay, I'll let you say. I mean, I was thinking that it would um, match with it, as so long as the character is an E or an A, but if it's an S or Y, um, or anything that's not an S or Y, but I feel like then there's like some overlap. Like, why don't you just put anything except for S or Y, or I don't know. So why don't you Yeah. <laughs> So, see, you, you guys can see that this is causing confusion in your minds as well. So, that is why here it doesn't mean anything. It is basically a literal character. If the caret sign doesn't come just after this and it is not followed by anything else, then it doesn't, it is not a special character in that case. So, in this case, it is basically a literal caret sign. Okay? No confusions. Let's keep things simple. Does that make sense, right? Can you repeat please? Okay. So, in this case, when a caret sign is coming in between uh, the characters that are there inside the character set, it doesn't really mean anything special. Like, it doesn't have a special meaning to it. It is a literal caret sign in this particular example. If I were to say this, Okay? Then it means everything except EASY should be uh, matched with this character class. So all the other alphabets, numbers, small, caps, should match except EASY, small EASY. Okay? But when it comes in between the character class, in between the uh, alphabets or whatever characters you are having inside the character set, then it then it doesn't have a special meaning to it. Okay? So, uh, now let's see the example which is here. So, anybody wants to explain in English what this regular expression means? Okay. Um, we, we, we give some chance. 
Stop straining my hands. Anyone? Uh, it's... <laughs> um, so it will match, it will look for a Q and then also any other character besides a U. Yes, so it will match anything that has a Q not followed by a U, which but, is really tricky. But won't it only match one letter after the Q, so that instead of highlighting all of the cut, cut term, it will just be QA? That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. So it will match uh, Q and A and not the rest of it. But can you explain why it doesn't match Iraq? Because it has to be followed by something. It has to be followed by something. And it's not like it is not being followed. Because in this case, it is not being followed by anything. So how will you find out all the words that have a cue not being followed by you, in which case they match Iraq as well? We'll get to that. But if anybody knows an answer there, we'll do answer it. Okay, so after this, we have a repet like how do you do a repetition with character classes? You cannot have a plus inside of it, because inside of the character class, the plus means literal character plus. So you uh, you have this expression and then you add a plus after that, which is something that we saw earlier as well, right? Uh, what was your name again? So what is Sorry, the name? George. George. George? Yeah. So as George mentioned earlier, you can add a plus after in the four number question you mentioned, right? So that's how you do repetition with character classes, okay? Which is what I have here, but then it it matches uh, everything like one or more occurrences. So it will match one, it will match two, it will match one infinite number of types. Uh, then the second example is uh, of subtraction. So we've seen that hyphen inside of this has a special meaning. But then there is also an example here where this hyphen when it is followed by an opening square bracket has a different meaning. This thing uh, doesn't really work in all the regular expression engines and they behave differently. Uh, so, whenever you're using this, just try it out first whether it will work or not. But there are different um, uh, solutions. So, some regular expression engines they ex uh, they accept double ampersand, and that uh, signifies uh, an intersection. Uh, but this kind of works in Ruby. So, uh, anybody wants to explain what this uh, regular expression means? Back are like just sitting there having a party. <laughs> Odd numbers. Yeah. Odd numbers. That is correct. It means all the odd numbers. It will not match any. But really. Okay. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Does it match this? This is an odd number. Well, it's looking by single digits. Mm. It's looking by character. So you were mostly there, you just missed a single thing. So it will match any number that doesn't have any even character. Right? Yes. <laughs> that only has odd characters. That only has odd characters. Odd digits. Odd characters. Like, yeah. Kind of we're, we're all odd characters. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that brings us to the shortcut tokens. I know everybody loves taking shortcuts. So instead of writing this entire thing, you can write a small d, uh, forward slash d, which was something that um, Matt suggested, and that matches any digit, okay? Uh, these are fairly simple examples, uh, so I'll not work through all of them, but if you have any doubt, then you can uh, ask me by the time I'm uh, explaining the rest of it. So now I'll be taking answers for 
what is the character class for this token? Okay, this one is difficult. I'll just explain. So this is a white space character. How do you specify a white space character? What is a white space character? Okay, yeah, that is a good question. What is a white space character? Come on, this is easy. <coughs> What else can you replace with the space? Like you can also give a tag. You can also give a new line. That's also a white space. Uh, empty quotation marks. Empty quotation marks. But there are still quotation marks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like if whatever is inside the empty quotation marks is the space. <laughs> okay. So uh, basically, all the characters like. So you say slash t as in tab, then you have this, then you have new line characters, this is uh, the new line, this is the new line character in Windows, and then uh, white space, basically, just a blank space. All those uh, character sets, they are matched by slash s, it matches any white space character. Um, then slash w uh, matches any word character. What is a word character? Yeah, that is correct. Have you been Googling? <laughs> no, uh, that's fairly interesting. So the word character is uh, letters, numbers, and underscores. Basically anything that you can use to name your variables, which is something that you can have gotten from here. I have a letter and a number and an underscore. Um, all these tokens, they have their negatives, which are in caps lock. So when you say forward slash capital D, then it means any uh, thing other than the digit. Any any word character. Uh, this basically means any alphabet. Uh, caps are small. Slash S means anything other than the space character. So it will match everything else. All the punctuation marks, all the uh, word characters, it will match everything else. And this is this matches everything that is not a word character. So this will match everything else, even characters that are not written in English, that don't have an English alphabet in it. For example, it will match uh, other uh, languages that use different transcripts. Okay? Okay, let's not go there. It will match everything except the word character. So it will match all the punctuation marks and uh, space characters. White space characters. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Okay. So now we are going to meet the ultimate character in the regular expression word. It's the top. So I've written what the dot means. Uh, anybody wants to explain? Or uh, now that you know what dot is, why is it not easy? Is it not interesting? It's just getting to the more interesting things. Do you guys want to take a break? Yes. Yeah, because I want to take a break too. Yeah. So uh, we'll just cover uh, two slides after this, okay? So, what does the dot do? Uh, <laughs> so, the dot is one of those uh, versatile special characters that will match anything except the new line character. Mostly. Uh, there is a special setting that you can turn on to say that, okay, you have to match the new line character. But if you don't do that, if you're just using the plain vanilla uh, regular expression engine, it will not match uh, the new line character. There is a history behind it, and uh, the reason for the dot to not match a new line character is from the typewriter thing that I introduced earlier. So basically, in in the older uh, times, like when uh, regular expressions were designed, which was way back in the 50s, uh, that time, uh, there used to be like a carriage return, and the line used to break. Like, literally, you would start writing onto a new line because there were punch cards and things like that, right? So, 
there was no no way to continue forward okay so uh, uh, because of that reason uh, the dot would not match uh, the line break and it would just in that particular string it would match everything else okay so what can you do with the dot it's just one character and it just matches everything else so what you can make it all the more powerful by adding uh, the repetition tokens after it. So if you say dot star, that's basically everything out there. Don't match anything and everything. So never use dot star. <laughs> use dot star, but with caution. Okay. Uh, dot is the most powerful and the most abused uh, regular expression character. So you have to be wary of using like a dot star thing because it would match anything out there which you probably don't want. So let's uh, take a quick uh, understanding of this. Let's say that you have to match an uh, HTML source code. Okay, uh, the HTML source code looks something like there is a body tag and then you guys are awesome. <coughs> and awesome is written in italics. So how do you say it is italics by saying I or something? Uh, and then you have the closing mod tag. So who wants to design a regular expression that matches just the HTML tags? So let's see, like, uh, I'll get you guys started. Uh, so what do you see here? Okay, let's, let's also have something else. Like, there is H1. All of this is written in like heading. So now you have something more. And and there are also some things like uh, attributes to it. Like HTML will have classes and all these other attributes to it. Let's keep it simple for now. This is it. So then you have, you can say, okay, slash D. But that will match only digits, you don't want that. You also want, so you'll say, okay, I want to use a word character. I'll have to go all the way back there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can add that. Okay. Huh? You can do it. How? I can do it here. How? <laughs> okay. So you can use, this is a word character, it will match all the words, right? And then you can say, but well, the word character will not match this. So you have to start with a literal character and then you can say with this and then plus and then you have to match this so you say this right or you could inversely also say dot plus but i told you that dot will match anything so if you have uh, so dot will actually match even this right so if you're having dot plus then that's it it'll match the whole uh, text here but that's not what you want. So we'll use a dot consciously. So we'll not do this. Okay? This is what we'll use. Uh, so uh, what will happen? And we'll see the greater sign, and the greater sign will match or less sign, whatever it is. Like if when the regular expression you see is this, this matches, then it goes to the next frame, which is a B, and that is a word cap. Okay, good. Then it sees, oh, okay, that's fine because there's a plus. Then it keeps going. And then it finds a, a closing tag. And there's a closing tag. So this should match, right? It should match this. Anybody has 
Any disagreements with me? It would match this. Would it also match something else? On the screen? Oh, you just have to match one tab. Like you have to, this can be the second match and the third match and the so first match. The word character doesn't match the the word character doesn't match the forward slash. Yeah, it doesn't. The word character only matches letters, numbers, and underscores. Surprise! This will not just match until here because regular expressions are greedy. It will keep going. It will. No, okay, no. It will not keep going. Why? Because this is a word character and this doesn't match. If you were to use uh, dot plus this, then it would have kept going because dot would have uh, matched this and would have just kept going until the end. So using a word character is a better choice in this case if you want to just match this thing. Yeah. So uh, let's go to that example that I have there. So when I use dot plus, so that, that matches uh, the entire string that I have there. That makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, now if I will do. And this matches this, but see, it doesn't match the closing tag, which is what uh, I think Lectra pointed out. You literally. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so, how do we solve this? Because we also have to match the closing tags, right? So, that is why we can either. Okay, any suggestions how we do that? Slash with a question mark? That is a good suggestion. So, where before, are before the backslash W in your expression? Here? Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, it's not forward. Or backwards, so right? whatever. Yeah, some slash. <laughs> yeah, kind of like. Okay. No, so you are correct. This is a special character, and oh, in order so to use a special character, you have to escape it. Okay? So, that is a much saner expression because it doesn't match everything that is out there. This is one way to solve the greediness. There are multiple other ways to solve the greediness. If you, if you wanted to just use dot plus, we can make the greedy uh, trait of the regular expression, we can tame it by making it lazy. How do we make it lazy? We make it lazy using question mark. This is another use of question mark, which is kind of counterintuitive because when you see a question mark, you would think there's a zero or one occurrence, and then it should just keep on going because regular expressions are greedy. When you add a question mark after a repetition operator, so you see the plus there, that's a repetition token. When you add a question mark after that, it tames the regular expression and it makes it lazy and it doesn't go after this. But what it also does apart from this is it makes the regular expression slow. Because now, like the regular expression will function just as it was functioning. It goes forward and then it has to backtrack. It has to keep everything in memory. It has to keep track of everything that it has seen so far and then uh, drop something or the other. Right? So this is not a very efficient way of uh, solving greediness. Then the other option is the one that we saw. There is another option. We can also say this. Uh, so nothing except this and then plus. Yeah. So, uh, we are not using a word character because the word character doesn't match the uh, forward slash and we had to escape that. 
right? Remember the other approach that we had? We can have anything in the uh, closing tag except the closing tag, right? So it doesn't match everything and it doesn't make it greedy as well. <coughs> so this is solving greediness using the same character approach by providing just the specific things uh, or the specific characters that you want to match <coughs> and by keeping, by not being verbose. So otherwise what we were having was a slash w which is a word character and then a plus and then an escaped forward slash in order to match the closing uh, HTML tags. This is the other way. So there are multiple ways to write. This is just an example to show that there are multiple ways to achieve the same objective through regular expressions. And that is why it is really difficult to understand or it gets just all the way confusing at times. And especially when you're doing code reviews, you have to understand what the other person has written. And you have to figure out that, okay, this might get, uh, this might be misused or this might be abused, right? So, uh, how do we solve this greediness? Yeah, these are the two approaches and the third one we just figured out. <coughs> okay, so there are more things on that. Uh, I guess we can take this up next time or do you guys want to That's up to you, I think. Can I continue? Should I continue? Like, if you guys, I, I, I don't want you guys to forget what I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think if it is, yeah, you guys need to stop me when it is getting just over the top and you've just had enough. Is there about another hour? Yeah. Or more. I say keep going for a while. Okay. It's just one person's opinion. Well, I think you should keep going too. Okay, let's vote. Third. <laughs> keep going. Okay, not keep going. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll turn, turn it around. Yeah, don't feel shy. Like, guys, come on. Uh, Can we do it then but in less than an hour? No, we cannot do it in an hour. Please. I, I, can, I can do it in less than an hour. Like, all the things that I taught before, they were just five minutes. Like, they were half an hour what I thought. They would be just half an hour. That's that's how I planned it. I think we're fine. We okay. okay, let's go. So now we are seeing alternation. This <laughs> okay, I'll not do it. Uh, I'll, I'll do it next time. That's fine. I'll do it next time. Like we need to have a memory there. Okay. Things are going to get a little more uh, tricky after this. So uh, let's just end it here. I had a very interesting puzzle for you guys. Uh, homework thing that I had. You might not be able to solve all of it because I've not introduced all the concepts like back referencing and uh, look around and uh, a bunch of other concepts. Uh, so try to do it and then we'll take it next time. Okay? Thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Questions during the session? Just try to leave. Let's survive one email with all the names.